Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to try a bit of an experiment. I want to see if I can paint climbing roses, climbing over a sort of a, a cottage wall with a, a window peeping through. I've got a sort of rough idea of what I want it to look like and how I'm going to approach it. Um, so, so let's start. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper my favourite cotton paper, and it's taped to my board. My board's at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees, as usual. And I've, I've um, taped off a small area in the middle because I would like to have this painting in portrait format for a change and a little bit smaller than what I normally do because I think it's going to be a bit fiddly and a bit time consuming. So I shall paint slightly smaller. Now within that taped off area, I'm creating an, an underpainting that I want to kind of start off the, the wall of the cottage. And I'm using cobalt blue and raw sienna. Um, and with my squirrel mop, I'm letting the paint run down, letting it blend and merge trying to leave some parts paler, maybe some white areas um, un of unpainted paper, which will help me to start off my roses. So I'm just looking for a background colour. Watercolour will always soften and dry a lot lighter than when you put it on. And I'm just hoping for something just to take away from most of the white of the paper and start me off so that I can start painting the roses. I'm adding a bit more of the raw sienna, which is blending with the cobalt blue and giving me this nice sort of um, like stone wall colour, I think, sort of greyish, sandy colour. Nice and uneven. Right, I think that will do. I'm just going to leave it to dry now. I've come back, it's completely dry. And so I think the first thing I'm going to do is paint in some stems for my roses. And I'm going to paint them coming up from the bottom left corner and then tending up in a sort of a diagonal up across the window towards the top right corner. This is my small Chinese calligraphy brush and I've mixed up a mixture of ivory black, cobalt blue and burnt sienna to get a sort of brownish black. And I'm carefully putting in some shapes for the rose, um, the climbing rose bush stems as they climb up the wall just before they begin to go into leaf and flower. As I said at the beginning, um, this is going to be from my imagination, so it'll end up being quite a, I'd imagine, a sort of stylized painting rather than anything particularly realistic trying to keep these lines flowing nicely across the the paper so that they make a sort of an attractive uh, but believable base for my rose bushes once I start painting in the leaves. I think that will do to start with. So again, using the same calligraphy brush, I'm, I'm going to start painting in my um, leaf clusters around the ends of the stems there. I'm going to build them up across the wall. This is a mixture, again, of cobalt blue and raw sienna um, to make a sort of a greeny, browny colour um, with different shades, depending on whether I put more raw sienna or more cobalt blue into the mix. I'm just going to sort of scribble and dot to suggest the leaves and the groups of leaves and the thick canopy um, of this, these rose bushes climbing 
over the wall without actually painting every leaf. So I'm varying the colours slightly and the tones and I'm dipping into water um, to then soften back some edges. So I'm painting with hard and soft edges, um, different tones and different hues. trying to keep my edges fairly ragged and leaving plenty of unpainted paper with the wall showing through and where I've got particularly light areas I'm leaving that unpainted too and towards the end of the painting I'll be painting in my roses. This is quite a slow process so I won't be showing all of this um, because it takes quite a long time to build up this kind of look evenly. And I'm going back and taking some darker paint and dotting that into the already painted areas and then I'll be doing the same with lighter paint as well. The darker paint I'm trying to get sort of around the bottom edges of the clusters of leaves to indicate shadow and the lighter, um, stronger raw, um, raw sienna mix I'm keeping towards the top of the clusters. That way I'm hoping painting these clusters wet in wet that I'll get some lovely colour blending um, on the page and lots of different, um, lots of variety in the colours and the shades that should give me my sort of illusion or impression of my rose bushes. That's um, almost pure cobalt blue just being dotted in and mixing in colour blending on the page wet in wet to produce the shadows. So I think I, I shall basically work in this same way across the page, making sure I leave enough of the window showing and enough of the wall showing as well. I think I'm going to be okay painting the window in later. Um, that might be something that I might um, decide to change should I paint this again and paint the window in first. But I thought I'd share part of my process with you of, of how I experiment and try out something a bit different, something a bit new. Um, it's the sort of experiment that I'd encourage everyone to do who's trying to learn and progress with watercolour because you only really discover new things and um, through experimentation. You also, as well as discovering what you can do, you can discover what you can't do and what not to do again. And that's equally as important as discovering successful techniques. Putting in a few more of those stems and I shall work across the bottom, just building up a few more leaves. It's this sort of um, scribbling um, brush strokes, dotting and dashing, trying to, as I said, create soft edges, hard edges, darks and lights, but all in sort of masses that kind of join and link together. When I paint 
near the masking tape, I will paint over the tape so that when the tape's removed, it will look as if the rose bush is growing out of the frame. So I'm filling the entire frame if I can. I'm working in small areas at a time or fairly small areas and the reason for this is that I can work in a sort of a mid-tone and while it's still wet I can drop in lights or darks and they will diffuse and run and colour blend on the page um, and soften out as well. So uh, that's the reason for doing this is that I'm trying to paint most of this wet in wet for this kind of sort of uh, misty blurry look. I've got a nice large area of white unpainted paper just here. So what I'm doing here is trying to work around it with the darks because I'll have um, quite a few of my roses there. They should stand out really nicely when I paint um, the red paint onto um, the white unpainted paper there. So I'm being careful to leave as much of those spaces as I can sort of linking across to the areas of the rose bushes that I've painted already. So what I'm doing here is, is I'm negatively painting the roses at the moment. I'm painting around them and leaving the shapes, either unpainted paper or the pale background wash. Painting just the sort of leaf shapes and um, impressions all around. Again, it's just cobalt blue and raw sienna, various mixes of that, and then um, clean water to soften out and lighten and sort of dilute the paint and push it, push it around a bit so that I get some areas of fairly intense colour and other areas are just sort of softened out and become very soft washes. Again, I'm dotting in the darks or the brights. Just making sure that there's enough variety. I've kept my colours a lot simpler and darker in the top right corner as it kind of goes off into shadow and so that the eye won't focus quite so much on that area. This is a few more stems to try and balance across the top. I don't want to paint in many more leaves. I think I've got just about enough, maybe a few more here and there. Uh, but I just need to try and balance the picture up. It's looking a bit imbalanced at the moment, but once I've got my window in and some darker colours for the window panes and things, then I'm hoping that it should work okay. And I think that should be about enough. I'm going to now take my courage into both hands and paint the window, I think. So I'm going to take a flat brush. I think it's a half inch flat brush. And I'm going to mix up some um, burnt sienna to start with. I think that sort of a reddish brown should contrast well with these colours here, but without being too, uh, too bright. I'm just going to... 
sort of map out a window frame and now you can see there's a bit you know it's a little bit awkward painting around the foliage that I've already painted um, as I said before I think the next time I paint a similar scene I may think about it and work out, out a way of painting the window first um, leaving some unpainted paper for where the um, the rose bushes and canopies cross the window because this is a little bit awkward painting around it, putting in my window panes now. Um, this is a darker mixture of my ivory black and burnt sienna, just on the tips of the brush. Um, I don't want to make my windows look too regimented. I mean, I, I want them to obviously look even, but I don't want too, too much of an outline, but just enough of the window frames so that you can see that it is a window, but I'm... I don't really want to distract from the roses themselves, although the roses aren't painted yet, but I know where they're going. So I'll put some, some shadows into the window frame while it's still wet along the base. I'm just kind of feeling my way with this, darkening it up and, and sort of in a way hoping for the best. And now it's a kind of do or die really. I've decided to go in with some quite watery um, ivory black with a bit of cobalt blue in it. Um, so it's a bit like Payne's Grey and I'm going to block in straight over those um, rose stems. I'm going to block in my window panes. I'm trying to keep them sort of in the right, painted in the right place for the windows, if you know what I mean, but I don't want to paint them quite evenly. Um, I want them to be a bit sort of patchy. I think that's looking okay. I think I'm, I'm getting away with it just about. I'm going to drop in some much darker ivory black and cobalt blue into the, um, the the still wet paint there and just hope that it runs just to give me that as I say that sort of semi sort of reflective but dark look that you get um, in a window that's got sort of um, plants and trees growing over it. Now this is another experiment. I needed texture across the wall so I'm dry brushing cobalt blue and raw sienna very lightly in geometric vertical and horizontal streaks top and bottom um, to suggest my sort of plaster wall and I think I've just about gotten away with that too but I think next time I paint this scene I will put more texture on the wall first before I paint the roses on but that's what this is all about this experiment was about finding out what to do and what not to do now this is the fun part the bit I've been looking forward to and it's using a lizarin scarlet lake a lovely rich bluey red to fill in those roses I'm trying to leave sort of some of the white unpainted paper near the top of each bloom or group of blooms so that there's a little bit of light still showing, like it's catching the top of the flower. Of course, red is a complementary colour of green, so against these kind of olive greens of the foliage, it's standing out quite nicely.
So as I paint, I'm looking at how the groups of flowers are looking together. I want to have some large groups, um, a few sort of single flowers, maybe slightly smaller dots that will look like a bud partly opening. If I take you, zoom you in closer, you can see that it's just dotting and dashing in those unpainted areas. And because I've set up the look of leaves and the window and the wall, these red blobs should read as roses, even though they are just really just little scribbly marks. In some places at the base of the roses, I've dropped in a little bit of ultramarine blue as well, just to darken up the base of some of the larger roses. Now I'll continue sort of peppering this wall with these red roses. There won't be as many around underneath the window and over on the left. Um, that sort of large cluster on the right at the top are my sort of main main focal point, I suppose. Well, we see how it looks when it's finished. I still don't think it's quite balanced, but as an experiment, I'm pretty pleased with it, actually. I think it works well as a general technique, even if things weren't necessarily done in quite the right order or the most useful order. So, as I say, I would probably paint in more of the wall texture first and get the window in as well and then paint the flowers over that. I think a few roses just over the window as well. Not too many, don't sort of do overkill there. Then just a few dots here and there for these little buds. And I think that will do. I'm going to peel off the masking tape now and have a look at it and see how it looks. I have to take off the outside as well so that I can release that bottom edge. And yeah, I'm quite pleased with that as an experiment and um, I hope you found it helpful and you know maybe have a go at something similar yourselves. Um, you know, find your own way of um, painting this sort of thing and please do experiment in the same sort of way. It's amazing how you can discover new techniques and um, new kind of effects just through experimentation. If you look up, if we look closely, we can see that it all works reasonably well. Um, Thanks very much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks so much to my lovely Patreon group who support my channel. Um, take care. See you soon and happy painting. Bye.